And welcome back, and I'm Serge. And I'm Cern. Dr. Boysen, we're continuing our plus scanning here, and we're gonna look at ruling in or out pleural effusion. Yeah, so that's one of the big questions we'll have when we're looking at the pleural space in the pleural and lung ultrasound. Do we have pleural effusion, yes or no? And there are lots of tricks, again, to finding smaller volume pleural effusion. If our patient has a large amount of pleural effusion, again, we gotta think about patient position and how we're gonna identify that. Pennies and lateral, if we have a moderate amount of fluid, all we're gonna have to do is slide the probe underneath the patient here, essentially find the pericardial site and the widest point of the chest on the gravity dependent side, and that'll give us that pleural effusion. If our patient is sternal or standing, again, the position that our patient is most comfortable when they have significant respiratory distress, that changes. Rather than being at the widest gravity dependent point of the chest underneath the patient, we're gonna actually find that that fluid accumulates along the sternal border, that pleural border ventrally. So we're gonna show you how how we look for moderate or small amounts of pleural effusion with our patient in a sternal or standing position, the position they're most often scanned when they have respiratory distress. I love it, Dr. Boys, and let's go ahead and do this. So we're gonna start at our cranial plus border there because we're sure we're gonna be over lung. So Dr. Boys, I'm gonna part the fur, move that skin forward there so we can limit how much alcohol we're gonna put. We're first gonna look to see if we have that there we go, we can find our pleural line, bat sign. Do we have a glide sign here, yes or no? We can see that shimmer there. I'm at the cranial border, and I'm gonna go ahead and move backwards until I find that caudal border, which we've identified as the curtain sign. And I think it is coming in here. Might need a little more alcohol. She's a big chested dog. Wait there for it, go. wait Just for it. To come in there, but yeah. maybe jump one more rib caudal. Yeah. There we go. There we go. There's a lovely curtain sign. That's our vertical edge artifact. So yeah. I know exactly where you are on the chest now, Dr. Schloop. Mm -hmm. Didn't have to guess and try to hope that I could find that because what we're going to do now, what we found that vertical edge artifact, that curtain sign, we're going to follow that ventrally until the diaphragm and the heart come into the same window. So I'll go ahead and give you a little more alcohol. We'll separate the fur. And we're just gonna follow that curtain sign there down ventrally. There you go, see it moving cranially, jump a rib, we're coming ventral. It moves cranial as we come ventral. See a little bit of curving of the diaphragm away from the chest wall there. A little bit of a heartbeat there, so I know I'm getting close. All right, Dr. Boysen, so we're coming ventrally, ventrally, until boom, we see the heart and the diaphragm in the same window. Exactly, so this is our pericardial diaphragmatic window. It's a great spot for us to look for and rule out pleural effusion, but also differentiate pleural effusion from pericardial effusion. So we have pleural effusion, it tracks along the diaphragm and fills that costophrenic recess. If it's pericardial, it curves away from the diaphragm and around the heart. So we see this uh, pericardial diaphragmatic window here, and at this lecture location, you see a small fat pad, a little mediastinal triangle of fat between the heart and the diaphragm, and then you got the lung just starting to peek in uh, over that right here. So that is our pericardial diaphragmatic window. If we have a large or moderate amount of pleural effusion, we will pick it up at this location for sure with the probe perpendicular to the ribs, with that heart and the diaphragm in the same window. If, however, it's a small quantity of fluid that might not be causing respiratory distress, but that we do think can give us some answers with regards to diagnosis, if we see that fluid, we tap it, we analyze it, maybe it'll come back as septic, maybe it'll come back as a carcinoma. So we can actually look for small amounts of fluid at this location by turning the probe parallel to the ribs with the marker directed dorsally, and that gives us that classic ski jump sign. And here you can see that Serge has the probe parallel to the ribs and he's just a little bit over the abdomen again. So he jumps one rib cranial to the abdomen and that puts us on the lung where it curves down. So again, we're looking for that ski jump sign where the lung comes along the chest wall and then curves along the sternal muscles that you can see here. And if we jump cranial to this place now, we're gonna look for pleural effusion all the way along the ventral border. So we're gonna jump another rib cranial and you also want to go up and down between the ribs, Dr. Boysen. Absolutely. So we want to explore more area of the ventral lung. So we're looking for pleural effusion along that sternal border between the lung and the sternal muscles. And we're looking for lung pathology. If we slide a little more dorsal with the probe parallel, we're looking for actual pathology in the lung itself. So there we are dorsal. We'll slide more ventral again. There we go. We've got our ventral border. And now we'll jump our rib cranial. And we'll do the same thing. We scan up along the lung, no pathology present. We come back down ventral, excellent, no pleural effusion. So we'll jump another rib cranial. And then we got a little bit of the heart that we can see there uh, against the uh, sternal muscles. So we got a little bit of uh, the pericardial window here, but again, no pleural effusion that we're seeing. 
no lung pathology that we're seeing. Lots so, of Z lines, Z lines, Dr. Boyson. Absolutely, and those are an artifact that we often see when we're scanning the lung. They are arising from the thoracic side. Those are not B lines, so don't confuse those no. for B lines. Those are Z lines that we're seeing here. They are not sliding with breathing. And what we'll do then is once we've looked for our pleural fusion, and we've uh, assessed the lung and the ventral pleural border for fluid and for lung pathology respectively. We'll just move all the way cranial to the thoracic inlet, looking cranial, and we'll do again go dorsal on the lung, no pathology, and then we'll come down ventrally to that ventral pleural border again onto the sternal muscles and look for either pleural effusion or lung pathology. And that is how we rule in or out pleural effusion.